Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I thought it would be nice to just sit down and work in my sketchbook for a bit. Since I'm new to YouTube, I'm intuitively making my videos at the moment and I don't know yet what is popular among those people who watch our channels and what is the best way to do this and that. But I know that a lot of people on Instagram, where I mainly post my artworks, they like to watch process videos and also got a few requests to do tutorials or something similar. This video will not be a tutorial, maybe I'll do one at some point in the future, but I just thought that it would be nice to record my process of working in a sketchbook with some real-life commentaries. I was thinking between this format and recording a voiceover. I personally like to watch both, so I decided that today I'll try it this way and maybe next time I will do it with a voiceover. So I don't know how the process will go, but I'm planning to sketch for about an hour in my sketchbook, and then I will edit it to about 20 or 30 minutes maximum, so it's not too boring to watch. I will be painting architecture today, as it's my main subject matter. So something like this. It, yeah, it's my main subject matter and I thought while I'm painting I will mention what are, in my opinion, some important things and knowledge you might need to have if you would like to sketch or paint architecture in watercolor. On Instagram there are a lot of people who would also like to do it and I often get asked how I started it, what is the best way to start and so on and so on. So yeah, I thought that it would be maybe useful for someone uh, if I just share my experience of sketching architecture and what I consider to be important knowledge if you want to sketch architecture. Of course, it will be personal, so that will be just what I think is important. Maybe for someone else, something else will be important. This will be a very subjective opinion on the matter. It will not be like a proper tutorial this time. So I will just start drawing and as I draw, I will start kind of like explaining what I think is important to know if you want to sketch architecture. Since I'm starting with a pencil sketch, I will mention that one of the most important things when you sketch architecture is pencil drawing, so pencil sketch. Depending, of course, on what style you like and what style you would like to have in your architectural illustrations but if you want to be realistic or you are not working in some abstract way you have to master your pencil drawing skills many people actually underestimate the importance of a pencil sketch and they think that if you want to work with watercolor and you want to make watercolor illustration, it means that you have to have like perfect knowledge of watercolor painting techniques. You have to be great in using watercolor, which is also true. But at the same time, you have to improve your pencil drawing skills or just drawing skills in general. It doesn't have to be with pencil because you can draw with a pen, you can draw with a fine liner, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm just saying uh, pencil drawing skills because I mainly draw with graphite pencils before I start using watercolor. It doesn't mean that until you master your drawing skills, you will not be able to use watercolor, no, not at all. You can uh, master them at the same time. But it just means that until you improve your drawing skills, until you learn how to draw uh, properly, it means that you will not be able to achieve the results that you are probably imagining in your head. So every time you see a like, beautiful, maybe realistic, maybe semi-realistic drawing of architecture, of architectural elements, it means that this person has great drawing skills. They don't just know how to use watercolor properly, they also know how to draw with a pencil.
So you will have to constantly measure proportions. You will have to constantly train your eye when you see something. You see it in one way, but when you try to transfer what you see on paper, it's very difficult to transfer it in the exact same way as you see it because your hand doesn't have a proper connection with your brain or like with your eyes yet. It's possible to develop this connection. So if you practice a lot, this connection will become better and you will be able to transfer what you see on paper much easier and a lot closer to what you actually see. But if your drawing skills are not very good at the moment, so if you are just starting, you are just a beginner and you think that I can't draw... I know that some people who are not artists, but they would really like to learn how to draw, they think like, oh, if I don't know how to do it, then I just don't have this special talent or I don't have any predisposition towards being an artist. It's not true. So you can definitely learn all the skills. You, you can learn how to draw. If you do it regularly, if you practice all the time, you will be able to improve your drawing skills. So drawing skills are all about practice. You can't just read a book and then magically learn how to draw just from reading a book. This is one of those skills where it's not even that important to have any theoretical knowledge. I'm not saying that they are useless, I'm just saying that practicing and constantly drawing, constantly mastering your skills is much more important than reading any books, buying courses. So if you want to improve your drawing skills, just draw. When I first started sketching, I already wanted to draw and paint architecture. So that was the main reason why I even started thinking about drawing and painting. And I was also bad at it. I didn't know anything about perspective. I didn't know anything about proportions and so on. So I started as a complete beginner, so I didn't have any special knowledge and with time I was just like practicing almost all the time so I was drawing and drawing even if it was bad <laughs> at first I would get really disappointed at my results but with time it became better so I just I didn't give up I kept going and with time I started getting the results that I enjoyed so yeah if you want to Improve your drawing skills, just draw a lot, draw every day, everything that you can see. It doesn't have to be architecture. And even though I said that practice is a lot more important than theory, it would still be nice if you maybe just, I don't know, have some basic knowledge about perspective. If you read about some methods, how you can draw architecture. That would be great. Okay, so to conclude, focus on your drawing skills. Uh, sometimes even uh, if your drawing is good, if you managed to catch all proportions, if you managed to catch the drawing in a realistic manner, if your watercolor painting skills are not that great, so if you don't know any advanced watercolor techniques, you will still get a nice artwork because you can just, even for this sketch, for example, I could just use some gray paint and paint some shadows and that's it. So already, that would already be a nice sketch. It will not be a super realistic illustration, but as a sketch, it would be decent. But if you don't know how to draw, your watercolor painting skills will not save you. You can be the best watercolor painter in the world, but if your drawing is disproportionate or unrealistic, it will not help you. So in architecture, Drawing skills are a lot more important than watercolor skills.
Okay, since I'm working on camera today and I want to be rather quick, the, my sketch today will be rougher than I would normally do it. But I still think that it looks decent and it will be okay for what I'm planning to do today. Uh, the second advice would be to learn basic light and shadow theory. So that uh, obviously is not useful only for architectural drawing and painting. It's useful for everything, in, not only even in watercolor painting, in, in, in painting in general. You have to know something about lights and shadows. But I can't just avoid mentioning this point because it's really important. I will explain why. So basically when we look at architectural details, or at least that's how it was for me. So maybe for someone else it will be different, but I will just explain uh, my thinking process when I was learning how to paint architecture. So when we look at uh, some architectural details or at some buildings that we want to paint, usually they are nice, <laughs> yeah? Because why would you want to paint an ugly building? Usually you want to paint a building because it looks beautiful. And when the building looks beautiful, it usually has a lot of interesting details. If you ask yourself, why do I want to paint this building? Or why do I want to paint this element? Usually it will be something like, because it has so many interesting and beautiful details, I want to convey these details in my sketchbook and so on. And that is tricky because it may mean that painting details is more important than light and shadow theory. So um, you might just concentrate on conveying the details, beautiful details of this element, rather than trying to build the basic volume of the object. Even though all the details are usually the reason why we start painting something, it shouldn't be the main thing we think about when we are actually painting. You can think about details at the very last moment, like at the very last step. First of all, you think about how to build the volume of your object. And the volume means that you have to get the relationship, the contrast between light and shadow well. And that's what many people often forget. I also was focusing on details a lot more than I was focusing on the volume when I was just starting. So that's why I decided to mention this in case someone has like a similar approach and a similar thinking process. Once again, you don't have to be a professional artist in order to start sketching architecture. Some basic knowledge will be okay. Basic knowledge, I mean, you have to know how the light will affect your object, how the light will affect the colors. So it's nothing extremely advanced and complicated, just some basic things. And yeah, I can also include a sub point and I already mentioned it, but I can mention it once again, because it's really important that building volume and and conveying lights and shadows in the correct way is more important than working on details. I guess that was my, the main reason why I mentioned this as my advice for painting architecture. That's what I'm actually working on at the moment. So I'm trying to catch this relationship between lights and shadows in my object. In watercolor, it's especially difficult to do it because watercolor dries very quickly. So you have to think quickly as well to react to the drying paint in case it's drying somewhere. And in case you are having problems with that at the moment and you think, oh, it's so difficult, I will never be able to do it. I will also maybe, if it helps, I will tell you about my personal experience. So at the beginning, I also couldn't do it. I couldn't control the state of the watercolor paint. It was really difficult for me. So I was thinking, how on earth <laughs> you can do everything at the same time in watercolor. So it's, it's so difficult. 
But then the more I practiced, the more I worked, the easier it became. I can't say that now I consider myself to be a professional. So I still look at my artworks and I think here I want to do something differently, but I just didn't manage to do it. So I, ho I have a lot of room for improvement, but it, I definitely feel more confident than when I just started drawing architectural details, I think five years ago. Yeah, I think five years ago I started attempting my first architectural sketches. They were very flat <laughs> and not very colorful, but you have to start somewhere. So my next advice would be to pick references wisely. I don't know if you are planning to paint with your own references or maybe you are planning to use references from like Pinterest or something similar. It's obviously a, a personal decision. I always use my own references. It's just more interesting for me and plus I think it's the best way to avoid any complications in terms of using other people's photos as your references for drawings. Because of some legal issues, it can lead to certain problems if you, for example, decide to sell your artwork or if you decide to exhibit your artwork and so on. So I just think that it's a lot safer and a lot simpler to just use your own references rather than use somebody else's photos. But yeah, whether you are taking your own photos, whether you are using somebody else's references, you have to pick your references wisely. So it can't just be any picture. Sometimes the references that you picked will directly impact the result of your artwork. Usually the best references you can collect on sunny days. So if you have sun and it creates beautiful cast shadows like I have here. You can see there are a lot of cast shadows. These references are considered to be the most interesting and the most useful because they create this beautiful contrast between lights and shadows. Like in everything else, contrast in painting and specifically in architectural painting Contrast is really important because everything is more interesting if you see it in contrast. So your light will be more interesting if you see it in contrast with shadows. Your shadows will be more interesting if you see it in contrast with light and so on. So yeah, if you have sunlight, then it's a perfect reference for your illustration. Of course, the sunlight can also be different and I will not go into this difficult topic of explaining how to pick references for your watercolor artworks. It's, it's such a complicated topic that you can talk about it for the whole hour. I will just say that if you have sun, you have a better chance of collecting interesting references for your artworks. And the same goes for Pinterest, so just search for sunny pictures. If, for example, you are traveling and you see this beautiful building that you would like to paint, but it's not a sunny day, it's overcast, and you are in this place just for one day, so it, it happens, it happened to me. <laughs> million times. When I saw some nice building while I was traveling, I thought it would be so cool to paint it and there was just no sun. There is nothing you can do about it. It's a complex situation. It means that in most cases you are just unlucky, basically. You are just unlucky and you don't have this chance of collecting an amazing and beautiful references in real life. But what you can do is you can still take a picture of this building and maybe paint the whole building, the whole street view or the whole building and not just a single element. In this case you will not be focusing on the specific element and you won't really need this strong contrast between lights and shadows. 
you need this contrast is only because we are doing, for example, I'm doing now a close-up of a single element, uh, which means that I am working in details with this element. So I am painting literally everything, all the minor details, and obviously uh, the closer in focus your element is, the more details you need in order to make it interesting. But when you take the whole street into view, you will not need as many details, or the whole building into view, you will not need as many details. So you will just focus on the overall impression of this building, and without sunlight it will also be okay. Another option, it's a bit more advanced, and I think if you are a beginner, it will be a bit more difficult for you. You can imagine lights and shadows. So you can just still take a picture of this element in overcast weather or, I don't know, like in rainy weather. And then when you are at home, you can just maybe use your imagination a little bit or use the knowledge that you gained while you were sketching or painting other elements because still when you are painting when you are working with architecture you still remember something so you still get some knowledge about this topic you still remember some patterns and so on so you can just use this knowledge in order to try and come up with your own light and shadows relationship Speaking of imagination, <laughs> my phones just died, <laughs> so I don't have reference anymore, so I have to just use my memory or my imagination to complete this element. I've already painted something similar before, so I can kind of remember or guess what certain areas would look like. But yeah, of course, if you are just doing it for the first time, it would be extremely difficult to paint without a reference, whether it's a live object or if it's like a photo reference. And the last thing I want to mention, that's probably not even architecture specific advice, is to just practice a lot. Uh, the only reason why I'm mentioning it at, as a specific advice related to architectural sketching. Uh, it's because architectural sketching is very difficult. It requires a lot of time, a lot of practice, and it might be very easy to just think that I can do it, so I just, I have to give up. But it's not true. I think everyone can do it if they put enough time and effort into this issue, if you can say that, into this uh, sphere. Even if at the beginning you get some unsatisfactory results, you think that it's not at all what you want to see, just keep practicing and with time you will finally be able to have the results that you wanted. So yeah, even if it looks like it's really difficult and you can't do it, which is, it's true, it's really difficult. But with time and with practice, you will definitely be able to achieve some good results. I'm almost at the end of my sketch. It was a lot quicker than I expected. I think maybe because of the paper, because it's cellulose, it's 100% cellulose paper, so it dries quicker. I hope my impromptu advice, pieces of advice. I didn't really plan it thoroughly in advance. I kind of made a plan what I wanted to mention, but I didn't write a script for this video. So I hope that it was still somehow useful for you if you are planning to start drawing architecture. Or maybe you haven't even thought about it, but maybe after this video you will think about just starting drawing architecture. At the beginning it might seem as something extremely different difficult, extremely long as well. <laughs> you might spend hours drawing architectural elements, but once again, the more you deal with it, the more you practice, the quicker it becomes, the easier it becomes, and so on and so on. So I would say the main thing is just to keep doing it and not to give up.
I'm looking at this drawing now through the camera and I can see that it's a bit uneven, it's a bit asymmetrical, but I quite like the result. So with time, you just realize that even if you are not 100% precise and 100% realistic, you sometimes get nice results as well. Even though I said that drawing is important, knowing basics like perspective, lights and shadows, everything is important and while it's definitely true, it's still fun and you don't have to be knowledgeable in everything in order to start doing it. Thank you for watching, I think that will be all for today. Let me know if you have ever attempted architectural sketching before or maybe if after this video you decided that you would like to attempt architectural sketching i would be very curious to know about this and yeah thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video